Hey, good morning. Happy Monday to everybody. It's good to have you back with us today as we dive into uh, the scripture. We are in the Gospel of Matthew and really excited about diving uh, back in this morning with you. Hopefully you had a great weekend. Uh, Dads, hope you had a great Father's Day and were able to do some good things, some fun things, and uh, got to spend some family time. Pray that it was a blessing to you. Uh, so today, um, as we get ready to consider what um, Jesus has to teach us in the Gospel of Matthew, I, I want to just encourage you to consider a couple things to think about uh, joining us for. One of those is this uh, Friday, we have an event at North Lake Community Park in Umatilla. Uh, it's a uh, just a family night of kickball. We'll have uh, um, we'll have some games going. We'll have uh, some a drink with some cooler or a cooler with some drinks in it and uh, we would love to have your family come out and join us just a fun night of uh, activity and uh, join us it should be a lot of fun uh, we'll laugh and uh, probably uh, make fun of some people as well as we play and have a good time uh, but love to have you come out then if you're a, a middle school or high school student there is a, a big event coming up this coming Sunday uh, big lake day we're doing two minutes skiing and uh, wakeboard and all that kind of stuff. Love to have you come out, uh, your family as well. So um, there's more information on our app about those things. So love to have you join us. Should be a, a good, good uh, weekend coming up. And uh, so let's jump back into Matthew's gospel. We've been walking through the story of Jesus as he begins his ministry, and we're just kind of getting into the beginning of his teaching spots here. He's called his disciples. We've seen in chapter four that he's uh, started doing some miracles and healing people and helping people and just some really amazing things that, that Jesus is doing and this is Matthew's record of this Matthew's record of Jesus's ministry and so um, we're gonna get into a section today what we call the Beatitudes uh, it's a section we call the Sermon on the Mount it's Matthew 5 6 and 7 uh, it's really Jesus's longest uh, continuous discourse on uh, certain things about life and really um, when we really think about it this is a, a pretty important time let me just read verse 1 and 2 right here it says now when Jesus saw the crowds this is chapter 5 of Matthew uh, he went up on the mountainside and sat down his disciples came to him and he began to teach them so just imagine the scenery here right so it talks about crowds began to follow Jesus and, and come to Jesus some of them came because they wanted healing. Some of them really came because they only wanted to hear his teaching. And Jesus begins to teach them, but there's so many people that he goes up on that hillside and he has everybody else sit down here at the bottom and he begins to teach. He begins to communicate to them. And not only does Jesus communicate, but he gives them this new way of looking at life. Um, so years and years ago, it was the Jews who would sit down at the bottom of Mount Sinai and Moses came down and he had the tablets of stone and he gave the people the law that God had given. This is kind of a similar situation where the Jewish people that were following Jesus would have sat down at his feet and Jesus would have began to teach. Um, but instead of like all the rules and regulations of do this, don't do that, that we see in the Old Testament, Jesus says, let me, let me share with you a new perspective of how life in the kingdom of God really works. Uh, you might think it's this way, but I want to I wanna share with you if this, it's this way. Uh, Jesus is going to say some things like, you've heard that it was said, um, do not murder. But let me tell you that if you have hatred toward your brother, uh, that is the same, right? He said, you've heard that it was said, uh, don't commit adultery. But I'll tell you that if you, um, if you are lustful in your mind toward a woman, you've already committed adultery. Um, all these different things that Jesus speaks about, new concept, new perspective on life and living in the kingdom of God. And a lot of it that we're gonna find is so, so liberating that God wants us to experience his freedom and his healing and uh, purpose in our life. So the first little aspect, the first little part of the Sermon on the Mount, we're gonna cover in two days. We're gonna cover part one today and part of it tomorrow. There's a section called the Beatitudes, these, the blessings of God, the, the fullness of God that we get to have in Him. And so Jesus would start each of these statements in verse 3 through uh, like verse 11 with a, with a statement that He starts with. He says, blessed are 
those, right? Blessed are those. That word literally, when you translate the word blessed, the word blessed means happy, joyful, content, fulfilled, satisfied, right? That's who we are when we do these things. So let me read, I'm going to read verses 3 through 7, and then we're just going to dissect that just for a moment here today. He says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. A couple things that Jesus says here that I think are interesting. And I think it's important that we recognize what Jesus is really speaking of in these things. So blessed are the poor in spirit. Poor means you had a lack of something. He's talking about being poor in the spirit. So he's not talking about financial uh, poverty. He's not talking about possessions. He's talking about spiritual uh, life. The, the, the spiritual holiness and righteousness and cleanliness. He's saying, blessed are the poor in spirit. So he's not saying, happy are those who are away from God or who are, don't have a rich relationship with God. He's saying, blessed are those who are poor in spirit when, when we recognize that on our own we are spiritually bankrupt, right? That on our own we can't do enough good things in our life, right? That we are helpless on our own. Uh, the Bible talks about our our good deeds are are like filthy rags compared to the holiness of God. We just don't measure up. And for those who recognize that, blessed are those who recognize they are poor spiritually and they need a savior, those are the ones who will inherit the kingdom of heaven, those who get the kingdom of heaven. So when we recognize our poverty, when we recognize our insufficiency to save ourselves, that's when we find our place in the kingdom of God. He says in verse 4, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. He's not talking about mourning over like uh, the loss of a loved one. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about this spiritual application of the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those whose heart is broken because of our sin. Not because of something that we see in the world. We are broken because of our sin. When we get to a place where we recognize that my sin, our sin, hurts God. It pains God, right? When we get to a point where we recognize the depravity of our life and our sin, we are then at a point where we can be comforted. When we recognize the, the, the brokenness that we have in, in our sin, we set the stage then for God to come in and heal us. And that's where we're comforted. That's where we are encouraged. That's where we find healing. And when we are willing to say, I'm moved to repent because I am mourning my sin. Verse 5, it says, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. That word meek is a, a great word. It's a word that means strength under control. Um, so when you think of strength under control, um, you, you think of a dad that is playing basketball with his four-year-old, right? So the dad playing basketball with a four-year-old, um, obviously dad has the ability, most likely, uh, and the strength to absolutely dominate that four-year-old, right? There's no way that four-year-old is going to win in that battle. No, no way in that game is he going to win, right? But a dad shows meekness by letting his child score some baskets, right? He might even help him, right? He might even pick him up and let him dunk the basketball by holding him over his shoulders. And so strength under control is this idea that you harness what you have in strength for the betterment of someone else. That's what that word means. That's what Jesus did, right? When he went to the cross, Jesus had all the power to come off the cross, to do whatever he wanted to, but he chose to use his strength and control it to the degree that it would bless others. That's what it means. And Jesus is saying, blessed are those who are meek, right? Who use your strength and abilities and resources to bless others because you will be the one that inherits uh, the earth. What a great thing. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Jesus is not talking about biscuits and gravy here. I'm sorry to burst your bubble if that's what you're thinking. Uh, hungering, thirsting, hunger and thirst for righteousness is what Jesus is talking about. And he's also not talking about like just this uh, he's not talking about just this like gentle kind of 
hunger of like, oh yeah, I could use kind of an appetizer now, or I'd like to have a little snack here. This, this phrase, when he says hunger and thirst for righteousness, you need to picture, you need to picture someone who is, um, someone who has been malnourished, someone who is hungering and thirsting because he knows if I don't get food, if I don't get some water, I'm probably going to die here. That is the concept that Jesus is saying. That we spiritually have this idea of, I need to be in God's Word. I need to learn about who Jesus is. I need Him to fill me because I can't do it on my own. I will not survive without God in my life. That is the posture we should have. It's a hunger. It's a craving. It's a pursuit of nourishment that we recognize, I'm going to die if I don't get it. That's the kind of pursuit that God wants us to have of Him. And then lastly, he says, uh, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Uh, the idea of mercy means you don't get what you do deserve, right? Uh, mercy means um, that when uh, someone wrongs you, everything inside of us wants to get revenge because they're owed that, right? They did something wrong. They should get repaid. They should get paid back for what they did wrong. That's what we think of when we think of um, what is fair in life. Um, mercy means we don't do that. Mercy means we don't retaliate. Mercy means we don't seek revenge. Uh, Jesus says, um, blessed are the merciful because they will be shown mercy. Also in, in Matthew chapter 6, we're going to read uh, in a couple days, where Jesus says, um, the measure in which you forgive others will be the measure that you are um, uh, forgiven by as well. If we choose not to forgive others, we can't expect to be forgiven by God. Same thing, if we're not willing to show mercy to other people and show grace to the people, how can we expect a merciful God to show mercy to us? Um, so it is so important that we think about this. So Jesus, when he taught these things, man, turn the world upside down. These are foreign concepts to people. Um, and Jesus is saying, this is the heart of God. This is the nature of God. This is my character. Follow me and you will do well. In life. So I pray that we can put these uh, elements into practice. Uh, tomorrow we'll cover the rest of those Beatitudes, those, those blessed statements about how do we find fulfillment and, um, and happiness in life. So let's pray. God, thank you for uh, your word and the instruction we find in it. Thank you for showing us mercy, God, showing us grace. Thank you for giving us your word that we might learn and grow from. We realize, God, that you've called us to live different than the rest of the world. Uh, you've called us to show grace and mercy where it is needed. You've asked us, God, to hunger and thirst for you. You've asked us to mourn over our sin, God. You've asked us to recognize our poverty and spirit so that we would cling to you for hope and for help. We just pray that we would do that, God, and be faithful to you. We love you and ask your favor in our life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, make sure you um, uh, tune in tomorrow morning as we finish up the Beatitudes, uh, and we'll go a little bit further in the Sermon on the Mount tomorrow. So I uh, look forward to seeing you then. Uh, until that time, God bless, and we'll see you soon.